Hey guys, Carl from Purple Moose Place. Today I'm taking a look at Ping Yao, First Chinese Banks, an economic dice placement game from Chinese publisher Jing Studio and designer Wu Shuang. In this game, players are playing as banking systems, giving and taking loans, donating to the local temple, performing remittances, donating to the local government for government favors, and so on, in such a way that their bank has the most fame, most popularity, and most of all, most money by the end of the game. This game has already been published and has seen a, quite a bit of success in China, but it's going to be hitting Kickstarter on January 12th in the hopes of funding an English language version of the game. With all that being said, let's head down to the table to see how the solo game plays, and I'll meet you back up here to let you know what I think. To set up a solo game of Ping Yao First Chinese Banks, begin by placing the game board and the player board out on the table. And set the round marker on the round one spot on the game board. Then set up a supply of agent tokens, silver Sai C tokens, and coins. Separate the bank branch tiles into level one, level two, and level three, and then shuffle those and place those out next to the board. Place out one of each of the government favor tiles. Place out the deck of remittance cards. And then to set up the player board, Take out this starting bank branch tile and place this somewhere in a level one position on your player board. You're free to choose which location you place it in. However, it's worth noting the color of the locations. This is a red location, a green location, and a yellow location. This tile is a red location, which counts in addition to the banner that's placed above the location. If I place this tile here, that's only going to be a red location. But if I place it here, it's going to be red and green. Or if I place it here, it will be red and yellow. So it's worth putting it in a place that's not red. So I will put it here to start. Then take two six-sided dice, one four-sided die, and three meeples in your player color. Place one meeple at the start of the remittance track, Place one meeple at the start of the fame track, and then place one meeple down here next to the take loan section of your player board. Next, you will also need two of each color cube to be used for the remittance action later, and I will explain that as I talk about how to play the game. And bring in the rest of the dice to be used by the AI player to block locations later in the game. Next, you're going to take one size C and place it in your headquarters area, two size C's and put them down here in the take loans area, and then finally one size C in your starting branch. You will also begin the game with 10 coins. So I will take one five coin and one, two, three, four, five, one coins. And finally for the solo game, there's one more special piece of setup. You're going to take these story cards give them a shuffle and choose one of them, which will act as sort of your goal for the game. And I'll explain how that works in a minute. And finally, we're going to take these event cards, again, giving them a shuffle, and we will count out eight of these. We're going to use one per round in the game. And the rest can go back in the box. So now we're all set up to play a game of pinging out first Chinese banks in the solo mode of the game. But of course, before we get started with our playthrough, I need to explain how the game is played. Before I explain how the game is played, however, I should explain what it is that we're trying to do and what our goals are for this game. I mentioned that in the solo mode, we're going to have this card, and this card is going to do two things. The first thing we need to look at is this spot up here at the top. And this is going to dictate one of the government favor tiles from over here that we're actually going to take to start the game with. And it's going to give us an ability right away at the beginning of the game. So I'm going to take this card that looks like this. And I will explain what that does in a minute when I talk about the government favor tiles. But for right now, I'm just going to place this off to the side. And then the other thing that this card does is it explains the end game goals that we're aiming to do in order to win the game. 
And this shows us the normal level of difficulty and the more higher level of difficulty, the hard mode, if you will. So I'm going to be playing the normal level in this playthrough. So what we're going to need is we're going to need to have eight agents in our bank branches on our player board. We're going to need to have built two level three branches and we're going to need to have scored 30 points or more by the end of the game. So let me go ahead and explain then how we score points in this game. There are a variety of different ways to score points in the game. The first is this, for every 10 coins that you have at the end of the game, you will score one point. For every silver size C that you have in any of your branches or in your headquarters, you will score one point. For every level two branch that you have built through the game, you will score one point as indicated here on the player board. And then for every level three bank branch that you've built, you will score two points as printed here on the player board. In addition, if you were able to get your meeple up into level nine, 10, 11, or 12 on the remittance track, or levels 12, 14, and 15 on the fame track, you're going to score additional points. And these points are cumulative. So if you make it to level 12 here, you will have scored one, two, three, four, five, six points. And likewise, if you make it to level 15 down here, you will have scored one, two, three, four, five, six points as well. You will also score one point for every two agent tokens that you have on your bank branches on your player board. And then finally, some of the bank branches, particularly the level three bank branches, will give you other scoring conditions that you might score extra points for at the end of the game. So again, with all that being said, our goal is to have eight agents on our player board at the end of the game, or more, at least two level three branches, and at least 30 points. All right, so now that we know what we're aiming to do, let's talk about how we do it and how the game is going to play out. Ping Yao First Chinese Banks will play out over a series of eight rounds, as shown here by the round tracker on the left side of the board. And I'm going to sort of walk you through each of the phases of each round, and I will sort of do them, or at least illustrate them as we go through. So the first thing we're going to do in the solo game is we're going to draw one of these event tiles, or sorry, event cards. And we're going to take a look at that, and the event card is going to show us two things. The first thing it shows us here at the top of the card are how we're going to roll those extra dice to block off the different action locations on the main board. And at the bottom here, you're going to see two things. This top thing is telling me what I need to accomplish during this round. And the bottom thing is telling me what I will get as a reward if I'm able to accomplish this top thing. So in this case, if I'm able to increase my fame by two, I will be rewarded with five coins. And it's worth noting that this must be accomplished within the round that it's pulled. If you do not finish this during the round, you cannot do this in a later round. It will be discarded at the end of the round. So again, for this round, if I can get two fame, I will be able to get five coins. So next, as I mentioned, we're going to use that top section to seed the board with AI dice. So let's start here. In this location, we're going to roll one die. And color doesn't matter in this case, we only care about the numbers. And the way this is going to work is this. For every die except for the final die at a location, that die will be placed in a rest area on the board. And the final die rolled for a location will be placed in the action space for that location. All right, so the next one we will roll another six-sided die. Down here we need a four-sided die. Uh, in the middle, I need a four-sided and a six-sided die. Four-sided goes here, six-sided goes here in the order as it shows on the card. Next again, a four-sided and six-sided die goes here and here. And finally, just a six-sided die goes here. So this die will not be placed for this turn. And now, of course, I need to roll my own dice to find out what dice I have available to me to place during the round. And then we are going to place these dice on the board according to the number showing on that die. So here's a one, here's a three, and here is a five. 
and we're going to use those dice to take three actions and we have to use the dice in order of highest number to lowest number so we must place this die and then this die and then this die when placing dice we are always able to once per die pay the cost shown under the number to re-roll that die if we re-roll the die we immediately place it as the new number and it does not get placed in its new location it's instantly used at a location so that's a great way to use a high number die and potentially roll a low number to place before placing other low numbers there will also be some abilities that we get later in our branch cards that will be allowing me to change the value of these dice if we change the value of the dice using those branch cards however they will be moved to the location matching the new number that's adjusted to so once we've done any adjusting, we can place the dice. But before we do that, there's one more thing we can do during this setup phase. And that is, we can buy some of these silver sices. And these silver sices are going to be not only points at the end of the game, but they're going to be a way for our banks to make income off of the money that they have sort of stored in the branches. And the only time, as I said, that we can buy these is during this initial setup phase of every round. And it costs 10 coins to buy one sice. So after we've decided to buy as many sices as we want to and everything has been manipulated as needed, we're going to start placing the dice and taking actions. And depending on the number shown on the die, the action will be slightly different. But there's also one more thing we need to pay attention to when placing dice regarding the numbers on the die. The first thing is that no die may be placed in a location that is showing the same number on either the die in the active space or in the rest area of that action. So for example, in this case, I cannot place this five here because there is already a five showing on this die. Otherwise, any die can be played at any location, but depending on the difference in number between the die being placed and the die in the current active location of that action, you're going to either spend or receive an amount of coins equal to the difference. So in this case, if I place this five here, the difference between these two dice is two, and I'm placing a higher number, so I would receive two coins from the supply. However, if I was placing this one die here, the difference is still two coins, but my number is lower than the die in the active space, so I'm actually going to have to pay two coins in order to place my die at that location. The only time that this is different is when we're using our four-sided die. And a four-sided die is actually going to register as one number higher than showing on the die only when comparing for this different value. So for example, if I play this three here, the difference is one, but because I'm placing this three, the difference now becomes two. And I actually receive two coins from the supply rather than only one. And likewise, if I place this three down here, the difference again is two from five and three, but because I'm using the four-sided die, I count that as a four and I only need to pay one coin to place there. However, once it's been placed, it does activate as a three and not a four. So now that we understand how dice get placed, let's talk about the six different action spaces on the board. And I'm going to start right here in the middle of the board because this is how we build our bank branches and how we fill in our player board. So back in ancient China, obviously, the headquarters of most banks were in major cities, but there were lo local regional branches that were extending across the country. And in order to found these branches, it cost quite a bit of money and you needed to transfer a large value of money from the city out to these local regional branches. Unfortunately, travel at the time was quite dangerous and you risked losing your money or having your money stolen on the journey from the main branch main bank to the branch bank and for that reason they used security escorts and this is the security escort agency basically and you're hiring a security escort to help you travel to a faraway region and establish a branch with that being said all you're really doing in this location is building branches on your player board but that's why this is the security escort agency so what you're going to do here is depending on the number you place, you're going to build a branch. If I place a five or a six, I can build a level one branch. If I place a three or a four, I can build a level two or a level one branch. 
And if I place a one or a two, I can build any of the three levels of bank branch. And the way that works is this. First, we're going to choose the top four tiles from whichever branch we're building. And we get to select from those four branches. And then we will choose. So for example, in this case, I took a level one branch. I can choose any location in that level to place the branch. Once the branch has been placed, I then have to pay a number of coins to build the branch, and I have to transfer a number of CICs from my headquarters to the new branch to sort of start up that branch. For a level one branch, I need to pay six coins and transfer one CIC. For level two, I need to pay 12 coins and transfer two CICs from my headquarters to a branch. And for level three, I need to pay 24 coins and transfer three CICs from my headquarters to the branch. And in this case, if I don't have enough coins or I don't have enough CICs in my headquarters to transfer to the new branch, I cannot take this action to build a new branch. You will also notice that the branches themselves often have some kind of ability printed directly on them. But in order to use this ability, we will need to assign a bank agent to this location on the tile to activate this ability. And I'll explain how that works in just a minute. The remaining three tiles that you didn't take will be placed at the bottom of the stack and game will continue from there. The next action spot I will talk about is this one up here. This is the town god's temple. In China at the time, every town had sort of a deity or a god that protected that town and they built a temple to that god. And in this case, the town god is very important to the people in the town. And therefore, if the bank is to donate to that temple and to help maintain or repair that temple, their, their favor or their popularity or their fame will increase with the people in the town. So at this location, we can place a die to increase our level on the fame track down here at the bottom, unlocking anything that we happen to pass along the way. And I'll explain in just a minute what those are. But first, let's take a look at the action. If I spend a five or a six, I can spend one coin to increase my fame by one. If I spend a three or a four, I can simply increase my fame by one for free. And finally, if I spend a one or a two there, I can pay two coins to increase my fame by two, or I could simply increase my fame by one for free. Again, when we increase our fame, if we cross any of these spaces that has something printed on them, we get whatever it says. So if you see a space that looks like this one, we're going to receive one free agent token from the supply. These two spaces here are going to increase the amount of interest money that we make when we give loans. And I'll explain that in more detail when we talk about the give loans action. This space right here tells me that when I take the remittance action, I get to draw one extra card to choose from. And I'll explain that again when we get to the remittance action. And finally, these three spaces here, as I mentioned at the beginning, will simply give you end game points towards meeting your goal at the end of the game. The next location down here is the Confucian Temple. In the Confucian Temple, it was basically sort of like the school of the time, and many scholars would go to the temple to study a variety of different things. In Pingyao, of course, with the banking system the way it was, many people would, of course, go there to study to become banking agents. So in this case, we can send our bank manager to this location to recruit agents to place on our bank branches. If we spend a five or a six die, we can pay two coins to recruit one agent. With a three or a four, we can simply recruit an agent for free. And with a one or a two, we can recruit an agent for free. Plus, we have the option to move one CIC from our headquarters into one of our bank branches. The next action down here is the central bank. And this is where we can give or take loans. And giving and taking loans are going to be a good way for us to have silver CICs to make use of but also to invest extra silver CICs so that we can make interest money and sort of grow our available coinage based on the CICs that we have. So again, at this location, we can choose to give a loan or take a loan. So let me explain both of those things. But before I do that, in this location, the number on the die is only going to dictate how long your loan lasts. If you use a five or a six, you can use one month loan 
or in this case one game round of loan. A three or four will give you two rounds or two months, and a one or two will give you three months, or in this case, three rounds. And of course, you can always choose a shorter loan than the level that you're activating. So let's start by talking about taking loans. Taking loans happens down here at the bottom of your player board. When you take a loan, you slide these two CICs up into your main headquarters. Now I have use of these two CICs. I then place my Meeple token on the space that represents the length of the loan that we're taking, either one, two, or three rounds in this case. And what this means is at the end of every round, I have to pay two coins in interest for taking that loan. And then this meeple will slide over. And again, I will pay two coins in interest. And when the meeple moves off of the board, I must return two CICs to the central bank. And if I can't do that, we can activate emergency funds, which I will explain in a minute when we talk about remittances, because it might happen in that case as well. To give a loan, you need to have at least two CICs in your headquarters. And what's going to happen is depending on the length of the loan that you've activated, you will slide those two CICs up into a one month, two month or three month loan. And then at the end of every round that those are there, you're going to score or be given a, a certain number of coins based on how many CICs you have in this give loans area. So in this case with two CICs in the give loans area, I would receive two coins for each of those CICs based on my fame at the time. Remember I mentioned here and here we're going to increase that value. So once I've crossed level four fame, I will be getting three coins per CIC that I've given as loans. And once I reach the 10th space, I will be scoring five coins or be receiving five coins per CIC that I've given as a loan. And again, at the end of every round that will slide over one to the left. And when they would move off of the board, they return to your headquarters to be used again for whatever you need to use them for. The next space here is the county government. And the county government, of course, if we give donations to the county government, they're going to give us favors or they're going to treat us in special way. And that's how we get these government favor tiles that I mentioned before. So if we go there with a five or a six, we can pay, one, uh, pay four coins to take one government tile. If we go there with a three or a four, we can pay two coins to take a government tile. And if we go there with a one or a two, we can get a government tile for free. However, when I say free, it's not 100% free because printed at the bottom of each of these government tiles, you will see that it says one size C. That means in addition to whatever amount of coins I need to pay based on the board, I will always need to spend one size C from my headquarters to the supply in order to take one of these government tiles. And if I don't have enough coins or I don't have a free C to spend from my headquarters, I cannot take the action and I cannot take a government favor tile. So while we're here explaining this action, let's go over all of the abilities on these tiles, starting with the one that I've got to begin with. This tile is going to work with that action at the center of the board here that allows me to build bank branches. So what this says is, with a value three die, I can build a level three bank branch. Usually I would need a one or a two to build a level three branch, but in this case with a three, I can build a level three branch. So that's going to help tremendously because if we remember one of the goals for the game is to build two level three branches. In addition, this says I start the game or I would receive one agent token. And I just realized now that I never mentioned how agent tokens are used. I only talked about how to get them at the Confucian Temple. So let's talk about that right now. When you have an agent token, you can place it in several different locations. One of them is in the corner of a bank branch, as I showed you, to activate the ability. You can also place the agent tokens in these, these circles here below the bank locations. And what that will do is if we have an agent there, it will increase the number of CICs that we can earn income from during every income phase. For example, right here, it says two CICs in the bottom corner of this tile. That means at the end of the income phase or during the income phase, I will score or I will receive income for up to two CICs at that bank branch. And they're all going to be two like that. However, if I have an agent here, that means I will receive income for three CICs at that location or I can have up to two agents here, which means I could have up to four CICs that will earn me income in a level three bank branch. 
In addition, if I don't have any branches that can use an agent at the time that I receive the agent, I can always place this agent in a empty space and then that agent will immediately be placed either below that tile or on that tile when I purchase that tile during the game. So I'm going to start by placing this agent right here in this level two space. All right, so let's continue by explaining the rest of the government tiles. This tile says that during income phase, I will get three coins for every two CICs that I have given as a loan. This tile says that when I go to the town god's temple, if I have a three to six value on my die, I can spend an additional one coin to move up one more space on the fame track. This tile says during the income phase, I will score an extra two coins for every level one branch, sorry, for every C in a level one bank branch. It's worth noting here, however, that the starting branch that I have is not a level one branch for scoring on this tile. This tile says that when I take the remittance action, which I will explain next, I get an extra three coins. And this tile says that during the income phase, I will score a certain number of coins or receive a certain number of coins based on the number of level two branches I have that include agents in them. The final location on the board is this West Avenue area. And this is where the majority of the banks were in ancient Pingyao. And at this location, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the remittance action. So remittance is something unique that happened with the banks in China. And that was, as I mentioned before, it was quite dangerous for someone to travel with a large amount of money from a city to a outside region somewhere. So in the case where a business had a main headquarters in the city and they had opened a branch somewhere out in a different region, they would often need to transfer money from that main headquarters to the branch. But again, it was dangerous for them to carry that money physically from one location to the other. So what they did was they used the remittance system. So what happened was at the location where the money was, they would deposit that money into the local bank branch. And then they would receive a receipt or a remittance ticket. And then they would take that remittance ticket to whatever location they were trying to send the money to and give it to the bank branch at that location. And then that local bank branch would let them withdraw that amount of money from that branch. So effectively they had transferred the money from their main branch to the regional branch, but they didn't actually have to physically carry the money with them as they traveled. So in this case, we're going to do something similar on our player board with our branches. And when we take this action, we're going to draw a remittance card. Again, if we've passed this level six on the fame track, we get to draw two of them and choose one from the two we've drawn. And when we draw the card, it's going to look something like this. So on the card, you're going to see a couple of things. First, this color symbol on the left side tells me the kind of bank or the location of a bank where I'm depositing my money. And the color banner here on the right side tells me the type or location of a bank where I can withdraw my money. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find a bank that matches this color on the left side. And it's worth noting in this case that the headquarters is a wild color. So I'm going to deposit money into a yellow bank. I don't have a yellow bank currently, so I could deposit my money into the headquarters bank because that is a wild color. Then in the future, when I'm done traveling, I'm going to withdraw the money from a red bank. In this case, this bank right here is a red bank. So I'm going to mark this bank as my withdrawal location by placing a cube of any color on that location and then placing one more cube of that color here on the card to remind me where I'm going to withdraw that money from later. And then depending on which level of the remittance we've activated at our action space, we're going to place this card in either the level three, level two, or level one, meaning three month, two month, or one month remittance, or in this case, three round, two round, or one round remittance. 
What's going to happen is at the end of every round, this will shift down one space. And when it comes off of this player area, you're going to have to remove one size C from whichever bank branch you've marked as the withdrawal branch. In addition, when you place the remittance card, you're going to receive two coins for having done the remittance. Plus, if you've placed this cube, the withdrawal cube in a level two branch, you'll get an additional one coin. In a level three branch, you get an additional two coins. Or if you do a withdrawal from your headquarters, you'll actually get one less coin. Also, when you've placed the remittance card, you're going to move your meeple up one spot on the remittance track. When you get to level three and level six on this track, you're going to receive one more coin for every remittance that you do from that point forward. So those are the six different actions, and there's a lot to take in as we just explain how the game plays. But a lot of this will become a lot more clear as we get into the playthrough, and it will also help once you see how all of these start mixing and interacting with each other during gameplay. So with all that being said, let me straighten up the board a little bit, reset some things that I've moved around, and we'll get into the playthrough. Okay, so we're all set up for the game. Let's go right into the playthrough. Before we do that, I just want to remind you, our goals for this game are, we need to have at least eight agents on our board by the end. We need to have built at least two level three branches, and we need to have scored at least 30 points. Also, we have this round goal that if I can get to fame this round, then I will get an additional five coins. And five coins this early in the game could be very big. So I'm going to work towards getting that two fame this round. All right, so we've got a five, a three, and a one. And I would like to build, well, let's see, I need two fame. If I use this five here, I can get one fame. And I'll score a bunch of coins or receive a bunch of coins because of that big difference. Also, if I can build a level one branch, it doesn't work towards my goal but it would give me a second fame. So I could use this fame and this fame in order to, yes, get that five coins from the round goal. Oh, sorry, I should only have one size T. I forgot to clear that off. Okay, also, I'm thinking that I might use my other die to do a remittance just to get a little money started to get me an extra size C somewhere that I can use it. Um, yeah, let's see how this goes. Okay, I'm going to use my five here. So the difference is three. I will take three coins. And then I will take this three. I can't place it here. I would love to use the three here to activate this. Uh, hold on, I didn't finish my action. This five means I pay one coin and I increase my fame by one. Now I can't place this three here because there's already a three there. So I'm going to use this three up here to start a level two or a two round remittance. So I will take this remittance card and it says place in green, withdraw from red. So right now, I don't care about the withdrawal right away because that's going to take two rounds to kick in. But I would like to place in my headquarters so I have more CICs available for building branches and doing other things. For example, giving loans. So I'm going to place that in the level two. I'm going to deposit in green, which is wild here. And then I will withdraw from red. So I'm going to place a cube here and a cube here of the matching color. And for my remittance, I will take two coins from the supply. This is level one, so I don't get any bonus coins. And I move up one on the remittance track. And then with my final die, I'm going to go ahead and go here, which means I need to pay two for the difference in order to build a level one branch. So I will take the top four tiles of this, and let's see what's on these tiles. I haven't explained any of these yet. This says I can spend one less coin for re-rolling dice. The next one is uh, the same thing. Then this one says, 
I can increase the value. I can increase the value of one die by one. And again, in order to activate any of these, I need to have an agent in the corner and they only get activated once per round. Uh, and the last one is the same thing. So I have two choices, either rerolling for cheaper or being able to increase the value of one die. Increasing a value of a die is going to get me more coins for those differences, but it's not going to help me have any better actions. So I'm going to take one of these cheaper rerolls and I'll think about where that gets placed in a minute. The rest of these go back to the bottom of the level one stack. And I'm going to place this in the yellow location because I already have red and green and yellow is the only one I don't have. So if I have something that activates on yellow locations, it would be nice to have that. Now, in addition to doing that, I need to pay six coins to build the branch and I need to move one size C into the branch from my headquarters. And finally, for placing that as marked on the board, I do increase my fame by one. And now here I've triggered an agent, so I get one free agent, and I'll go ahead and put it right there so I can activate that ability for future rounds. Also, because I now have level two fame, I will get five coins for having finished my event card. And that is the end of the first round as far as actions go, and we move into the income phase. So I'm going to score or receive income for anything that's in a give loan area, and anything that's in a bank branch. So right here I have these two level one, well this is not considered level one, but it's in level one. Branch, so two size C's and it says right here I get two coins per size C, so one, two, three, four coins. That will be all of the income that I take for this round. This remittance will slide down to the next location we will move our round marker to the next round and we will clear off the board. All right, so we move into round two. So I'm going to draw another event card. The top of the card again is going to show me how to seed the board. So we'll ignore that for right now. But the bottom of the card here says if I can build one level one branch, I will get one free agent which may or may not be a good thing. I don't really need another level one branch because I do need more level threes to win the game, but also level twos to get me more income. So I may or may not focus on that, but let's go ahead and seed the board. I need a four sided and two six sided dice at the top here. And I'm going to say green is the active die. So we've got these two go here. And this one will go here. Those are both four, so it doesn't matter if I see that for now. Next two four-sided dice at the Town God Temple. We'll say blue-green in that order. Um, and then two six-sided dice here at the Security Escort area. I will say green-yellow in that order. And that's it as far as seeding the board this round. So I will go ahead and roll my own dice. And I realized I'd used one of my own dice there. So I will go ahead and replace that with a red three and roll my own dice. And I've got a one, a one, and a four. Now before I do anything else, it's probably a good idea for me to pay attention to how many size C's I have and what I want to be doing. I would like to be able to get a level two branch built this round. Um, yes, and I could do that with this four. But to do that, I need a lot of money, which I don't necessarily have yet. Hold on. Five, six seven, eight, nine, 10. That's enough for a size C, but that leaves me with only five coins. And I can't, I need 12 coins to build my level two branch. So I'm gonna hold off for a second. But if I don't buy a size C and instead I, hmm. Yeah, if I don't buy a size C and instead I use my dice to 
do this remittance, that might help as well. But I can't use a four there because there's already a four there. Um, I don't really need any agents this right now, but they would help if I can do that for end game. Actually, I need agents for the end of the game anyway. I might as well use my four to build one more level one. It's going to get me some income and it might not be a bad way to do something right now. All right, let's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that anyway. I'm gonna put my four there, which gets me three more coins. Uh, I'll just take a five and put two back. And I'm going to build, that's a shame, because I have so much money. All I need is one more size C. But, that's four and five and I can't do that. Yeah, all right, whatever, I'll do this. Okay, so we take four level one tiles and we see what we get this time. This one says that during the dice preparation phase, meaning when I'm rolling the dice and placing them on the die track, I must move one size C from any of my branches back to the headquarters space. And again, this only activates if I have something there, and it might sound like it's bad because we also have to pay two coins to move that. But what that means is we could then use that size C again to do something different. So that could be interesting. This one lets me subtract one die or one pip from a die. This one requires me or allows me to do both of these things, but I must do both of these things. And that is, I will add one die or one value to one die and subtract one from another die. But I have to do both of those things. Or again, subtracting one. So I've got three options. Oh, sorry, that first one was an addition, not a subtraction. But I actually am going to take this one that I can add and subtract or must add and subtract. And I'll place the other three back in a minute. This goes right here. We pay six coins and we move one size C into that branch. Again, these go back in there. Did I put that back correctly? No, I did not. By building this branch, I increase my fame by one. And also because I've completed this round event, I'm also getting to get one free agent. And I might as well place that on that branch to activate that ability. Okay. Now, I need to start figuring out a way to make some money. And I do have two dice left with low values. So I'm going to do something somewhat tricky. I'm going to place this one here to take a loan for three months. And then I'm going to re-roll this. Now, because I have this action, I can once re-roll for one die or one coin less. This says one coin, so I can do this for free. I got a four. Yeah, that was a mistake, but that's okay. And we will put this four here, yeah, that's okay. It gets me four coins because that's the four-sided die. I get to add one. So I get four coins for that. And I'm going to give those as a loan. Now this is a four, so I can only do the bottom two. So that will be a two-month loan. So I'm going to get more interest than I'm paying for two rounds. And because I got that extra four coins, I can pay for another round as well. And these will be back in my hand before I need them to pay back to the bank. So that's not a bad idea. And that is the end of the round. So first we get income. Here I get two per size C, so two, four. And then here also two, six, eight, ten. So I'll take ten coins for that. And then I must pay two coins for this loan. This slides over to the left, this slides over to the left, and this will come off the board 
which means I now have to withdraw a size C from that branch, and this will get placed over here. And then we move into round three. So I will take my dice back, and clear off all of these dice, and then take one more event card. And this card, again, the top is just going to tell me, you know, what needs to happen to seed the board. The bottom here says, I need to build one level three branch. And if I do that, I get to take one more action. And taking one more action means I get to remove any of my dice from the board, re-roll it, and then immediately place it back somewhere of my choosing. But that means I have to build a level three branch. And to do that, I need $24 and three CICs. And I don't think that's going to happen this turn. We've got 10, 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let me swap these five for one more gold. So that's 10, 20. I have exactly 24, but I have no CICs, and there's no way I'm doing three times remittance to get that. But I could very well build a level two branch this turn to start making some more money. To do that, I will need some size C's, so I'm going to spend 10 to buy one. Uh, but while I'm doing that, let's go ahead and seed the board to see what happens. So first we roll one six-sided die for here. I roll two six-sided dice for here. I'm gonna say green, red. Oh, they're both fives, it doesn't matter. Uh, down in the bottom corner, one six-sided die goes there. Uh, in the center, I need a six and a four. Like that. And then finally at the agent down here, this one. And then I go ahead and roll my dice. Got a two, a three, and a three. That's not bad for placement, but not great for money. Let's see what happens. All right, so I do want to build a level two branch and I could do that with any of those numbers except I have threes here already and that's not going to let that happen but I could change something into a four to do that but first I need to get another size C and to do that I need to place up here to get a remittance because I can't borrow anymore so I need to get remittance. I could do that with a three. And I could save that two to do that. So let's see what we do. Then I'm going to use Hmm. I'm going to use this three here and pay one coin. Make sure I still have 12, one, two, yes. So I pay one coin there and I take a remittance. So I'm drawing one card and I need to place in yellow and take from yellow. In this case, I wanna place it in my headquarters because I need that to build a branch. That's three, so I'm going to do it for two months and I wanna take from yellow. So I have to take from this location. So I will place one there and one there and then we get two coins for the remittance. One, two, and that moves up one more. So that's that action. So next I want to build, but I can't with this three. Ah, but I can with any other value on this die and I get one free reroll or one cheaper reroll and this is a one, minus one is zero. So let's roll this and see what happens. I get a four, which is perfect because I can put that four here. That's one different, but because it's my four-sided die, it's two different, I get two coins. And then with a level four or number four, I can build level two. So I will take four of those and let's see what we get. All right, so this one is not giving me any bonus, but this counts as a red, green, and yellow bank for uh, remittances and so on later on. This says I get an X, no, this says I get one coin at income phase 
for every three remittances that I've taken. This one gets me one coin for every red building I have during the income phase. And this gets me one coin for every green location I have during the remittance phase. So right now I have two red locations because this is red and this is red. I have one green, I have one yellow. I've only taken two remittances. So of those, I wouldn't mind having the rainbow card, but I also wouldn't mind having the one coin extra per red space. So I think I'm gonna take that one and I will place this, hmm. If I place it here, then I could increase this, but I don't have an agent there. If I place it here, I would automatically have an agent but I would only have two red spaces. So I'm actually gonna put it here and I'll, I'll explain why in just a minute. But I do want more red locations. And I think I might use this to get an agent. So at least let's see what happens. All right, so then I have to pay 12 coins for my branch and move two sices over here. Okay, and that doesn't give me fame like level one does. That will give me points at the end of the game. So that's all that I need to do there, except to return these three to the bottom of the stack. And then I have one die left. I would like to get an agent to place here if I can. But the two can't go there because of that. But any other value can. And I only need one coin to reroll that. So I will use that and get a five, which is great. Because now I get three coins. I do have to pay two of them back again. Ah, so basically I've just paid for the reroll, but that's fine. I get a free agent and that agent will go here to increase that for my income phase. I did not complete this, so it will be discarded over here. And that is the end of the round. So we move into income. I get two for each of these, so two, four, six, eight. And then here I get three for each of these, so that's six more. And then I get for this card, because it's active, plus one coin for every red location. So I get three more coins for that. And then let me take a look at how much coin I have before I move on. That's 10, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and then two more. So I've got 22 coins right now, but this is going to slide over, which means I need to pay two more coins to that. And these come back down here. This slides down one more. All right, so we move on to round four. I'll take my dice back. And clear these dice away. Now I do have two C here to spend, but at the end of this round, I will need to return two C to the central bank. So they're not really mine and that could be dangerous if I do that. So let's go ahead and draw the event and see what it shows me because that might dictate what I do next. All right, so this one says, if I can get one of the government favor tiles, I can then take a free remittance at level two or round two round remittance. It is very expensive for me to take one of those government tiles, but it might be worth having because I can start getting some more income fairly nicely with those. Yeah, we're only in round four. If I get this government favor tile, that gives me extra money for level two agencies or level two branches with agents in them. That could be incredibly useful. So let's seed the board and see what happens. So we start with a four and a six here. 
and then just a four up here Oops. and then a six and a four down here which is going to make things tricky but we'll see what happens and then just a six here and a six here and a six here that's a lot of high numbers means i don't make a lot of money this turn and then we roll my dice all right so i got a four a one and a three and i can spend one of these sices to get a government favor tile because if i do that I get a free remittance and that will get me one of them back again. So let's keep that in mind. Um, a four is not a bad idea. Yeah, I'm gonna take this four and go straight there, which means I get two coins from the supply, but because I'm using a four, I have to pay two coins. So I'm going to pay two coins and then pay one size C to go ahead and take that extra government favor tile. Uh, that was a mistake. I should have bought a size D, but I didn't, so I won't. And because I took the government favor tile, I now get one free remittance for two turns. So I'm going to do that. It says place in yellow and take from red. I would definitely like to place in here. And then I will definitely take from this level one because it pays less income than level two. And now I do have enough money and size C's to build another level two branch, which is going to get me more income from this. So let's see what we can do. Yeah, not bad. If I put this three here, that's a three difference, but that's my big one. So it's only a two difference. So I paid two. I will take three back from that. And I am going to build a level two branch, which gets me four of these. This is one coin for every four fame. This is one coin for every yellow branch. This is one coin for every green branch. And this gets me an agent right away. An agent right away might be great because my end game is I need eight agents. But I already have four and I still have four rounds left. I'm not super worried about that yet. So I'm actually going to take the one for every yellow branch. Yeah? Yes. I'll take the one for every yellow branch. It gets me an extra two coins. No, I need the agent. I'm not going to be stupid. I'm going to take that with the agent and I will place the agent below that tile because now that branch will get me income for up to three size C's. I'm not going to have three in there yet, but it might happen later. Uh, I did re just realize I never took the two coins for my free remittance, but I did place this in a level one, so I don't get any bonus. I also move up one more on my remittance track, which means from now on, I will get an extra coin for any new remittances. All right, and now I'm paying 10, 11, 12 to move these, well, to build the branch, and then I'm moving these two sizes into that branch. And I get to take my free agent from that. And I will place that down here in the level three red because I'm getting extra money for reds in the future, potentially. So that's good to have. And I've got one last die. So now we gotta figure out what are we going to do? Ah, I just made a huge mistake. I just made a huge mistake because I have a loan coming due and I don't have any way to pay that loan right now. So I need to have at least, at least one more size C. So that means I have to, have to, have to, have to take one more remittance i have to pay one for the difference now 
and get to do a level three because of that. And I am placing a red and taking from green. So, I don't have a green to take from. But that's three rounds from now. So I'm going to live a little bit dangerously. I'm going to place in red. Uh, no, never mind. I was going to place here, but even if I have three there, I don't have another agent here, so that's not going to help me. I won't score any income for that spot. This is yellow, so that doesn't help. So I'm going to place in red means here, because that's where I needed it from anyway. I don't know what I was thinking. And then I have to remove or withdraw from green, and my only green is this one right now. So that's going to be there. So that means in three rounds from now, I need to make sure there's a size C there, or we're in trouble. But that's fine. All right. And because of that, I take two coins from my remittance plus the extra coin for my new bonus for remittances. That's level one, so nothing changes. And that is the end of the round. So we move into income phase. I get two, four for my level ones. Means I will take a five and put back a one. For my level twos, I get one, two, three, four times three is 12. And then I get one extra coin for every red, which is one, two, three. And with this new token, because I have two level two branches that both have agents, I get an additional seven coins. And I'm gonna trade back some of these so I can see a little bit more easily how much money I have. Ah, but before I do that, let's think about something. This is now going to end. I have to pay two more coins for that interest. It's going to end, it means I need to return two Sice here, and that's one of them. And I'm going to have to take emergency funds. And I didn't mention at the beginning, as I said I would, to take emergency funds, I can now take a C from anywhere else on my board, but I have to pay five coins as a penalty for doing so. So I'm paying five coins and I will remove a C. Now these are sort of accounted for from these cards. I don't really want to do that. So I will take one of these, not from there, because this will score me extra if I place one back from there. All right. And then this goes away, which means this also goes away. And these both slide down. Um, yeah, I should have four remittances, means this should be level four. I forgot to do that. We move forward this. I take my dice back. All of these dice are cleared. And we move on to the next round. Drawing the next event card, we get, if I can build a level three branch, I will get an extra coin every income phase for the rest of the game. That would be really big if I can do it, but there's no way with only 30 coins and no size Cs. Sorry, I just realized something. The size C that I pulled off of here should not have gone back to the supply. It should have been returned here to the central bank. All right, but with 30 coins, there is no way I am building a level three branch this turn. But if I can build one more level two with an agent, I'm going to get a lot of money for the next couple rounds. So that might be worth aiming to do. So I'm going to spend 10 to buy a size C. I need 12 to do that. Well, let's roll and see what happens before I figure anything else out. All right, so we need to roll a six and a four for here. I need to roll a four for there. A four and a six here and a six for here 
and two six will say red green for here six four and then I roll my dice to see what I get five four one okay then there's no way I'm getting this level three branch this turn unfortunately so I'm gonna leave that alone for a minute I do need one more of these, but then I would need two more coins. Ah, but with this, I can get three coins from here and build a branch. So I'm going to spend one more set to take one more size C. So now I have enough size C's for that other level two branch. Mm -hmm. Then, Let's see, what do we else do we need to do? I wouldn't mind having an agent. But with a five, it's gonna cost me money. With the four, it does not. Uh, but the five, it doesn't either, because I'll get two coins. But the four, I get a coin, and it doesn't cost. So that might be a better idea. A five. I don't need to take a loan. I don't want to spend any money to get this. I don't really want yeah, no, I don't really want to put any remittance out unless I have to. So I think what I will do is I will put the five here, taking a coin for the difference and then spending the coin to get one more fame. So in the case, if I ever do give another loan, it will be worth more. Then I will take this four and put this here to take a coin and take an agent. And I'm going to preload that agent right there. And then finally I have a one. Ah, that was a mistake. But that's okay, I get one free cheaper reroll so I can reroll this one and get a four which is perfect because now that's a difference of three plus one is four. So I will take four coins, one, two, three, Four, and I'm building a level two branch because I need money. All right, so I could get a free agent, which I've already got one, two, three, four, five, six. I only need two more for the end, so we'll hold off on that. I can't take this because I already have the extra coin for red. I could get a coin for fame, but I am only got one, so... I think I'm going to take this mixed color because that's going to give me extra for that red that I've already got. So let me take that one. We'll put that here on the board, which means this also goes below it. I will pay 12 coins and I will move these two size C over here onto this branch. So that is the end of the round. I did not accomplish the goal, so that gets placed over here. And we get some income. So I get two for this level one. And then one, two, three, four, five times three is 15 for my second level. I get one extra for each red, so one, two, three, and now this one is rainbow colored, so four. So I get four extra coins from that. I'll take a five and put one back. And I get here three level twos with agents. I get an extra 11 coins from that, which might turn out to be pretty good for us. So let's see what we got. 20, one, two, three, four that gets me a level three and i still have 11 left which means i'm gonna have to find a way to get some size c's but i could take a loan if i need to so let's move to the next round uh, before we do that clearing the board this comes off which means this size c is no longer there and then we take our dice back This slides down. Sorry, I just realized these never got put back. And then we draw the 
event card for the sixth round. This time says, if I can get four fame, then I, my income will increase by one for the rest of the game. There's only a couple more income phases and four fame is going to be really difficult to get. So I don't think I'm going to be doing that. So let's go ahead and seed the board. We get a four-sided die here, a four and a six up here. A four-sided die down here. Two six, let's say yellow green here. Huh, both threes. A six-sided die here. And then finally a six-sided die here. And then I'll go ahead and roll my dice, which is a three, a three, and a one. And I am definitely going to spend one set of fives or ten coins to buy me a Sicy because I need it to build my level three branch. I need to build a level three branch for sure, which means I'm going to need to use this one to build a level three branch. Ah, or let's do this. I'm going to activate this ability to make this one a four and to make this one a two. So now, hmm, yes, I need to cover this for later and I need to take a loan. So I'm going to use this four here to take a two round loan. So I take that and put him on the two, and because of the two difference, I take two coins. And then I will use this two here, treating it like a three for difference, so I pay nothing to buy my first three level branch. So we take a look here. This one gives me one point for every three remittances I've taken, which is only four so far, so that would only be one point at the end. This gives me one point for every green, and right now I've got two greens. This one gives me one point for every agent on this tile. So I would have to load that up with agents. Right now it would be one because I'll probably place it where the agent is right now. And this one gives me one point for every five fame. So I don't want that. Remittance might not be a bad thing. If I get two more remittance, I'm definitely doing one this round anyway. I could get two points out of that. I'm definitely getting one point out of that. I could get two points out of that. And green right now, I'm getting two points already. And I almost definitely will be placing one more. No, I need one more branch three. So you know what? I'm gonna take that one and I'll slot that here. And I'm gonna go ahead and right away and just activate that with the agent that's already there. And then, oops, this is a mistake. That should be there. I need to pay 24. One, two, three, four, and move three sizes right there. Now, I would love to take an action right now to get an agent, but I don't want to do that because I need to make sure I have a size here so I don't pay a penalty and lose a size somewhere else. So I'm going to take this one to do a remittance over here, which means I need to pay my final three coins. Uh, hmm. No. I'm going to use this ability to reroll this for free to see what happens. I get a six. That's not good but it will be fine, which means I get two coins instead of spending two coins. And then I take a remittance card, which says deposit green and withdraw green. So I will place that there. Nope, sorry. That's a six, it must be one turn. So I'm going to deposit into this one, which is green. 
and I'm going to withdraw from this one, which is my only other green. And that will protect me. I've got myself covered. So let's go into income phase. Nothing here. Two coins for that one. I've got one, two, three, four, five times three is 15 coins there. One, two, three. And I've got three here times four is another 12 coins here. Then I get one coin for every red, which is now one, two, three, four, five coins. And I get 11 coins for having all of those level two spots. And then, ah, a couple things, sorry. I forgot to do this remittance. I get two coins for that. Plus, because this is level two, I get an additional coin. So I should have taken three coins there and plus this one more, an additional one coin. And that should have pushed me up one more on that track as well. All right. So then we pay the two coins. I don't remember if I did that, but I don't think I did. We pay two coins here and we slide that over. And these both come off. So this I see is gone. And this I see is gone. And these are both gone. And I'm going to start changing in some money so it's clear again how much I have. One, two, three. Three, four, five gets me a five. One, two, three, four, five gets me another five. I'll keep those two. All right, so I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, two left. I do need to build another level three branch, but I don't think I'm going to do it this turn. But what am I gonna do instead? I need to get some agents. Um, I could get some money from remittance, possibly. Yes. All right, so anyway, I'm going to buy two Sicey. I mean, I should wait till the roll phase for this, but I need to do that anyway. I'm gonna advance this. And the reason I wanna do that is to make sure I have enough to pay back my loan at the end of this round. I still have two rounds. And in two rounds, I definitely need two more agents and I definitely need one more level three branch. So let's see what happens. We go into seven. Whoops, this was not done, it gets discarded. Round seven says, if I can give a loan for two rounds, then I get one free remittance. I don't think I will be giving any loans this round, but let's go ahead and seed the board. But before we can do that, I should clear the board. And we start with one four-sided die here, two six-sided die, we'll say red-yellow here, Two six-sided dice in the middle, we'll say red-green, like that. One six-sided die here, and then the two four-sided dice, again red-green, goes here. All right, and then I roll my dice and we'll see what happens. One, two, and one. Lots of low numbers this time, which is not good for numbers but could be good for other things. All right, I'm going to start by placing my two here, which means I have to pay three. I get two back from that, but it means I take an agent, which I will place under this one, and I get to move one size C from my branch somewhere else. And if I put this here, oh no, sorry, I realized I made a mistake. This should have only gotten income for two size C's and I have three there that I took income for. So I should not have four of these coins. That was a mistake. 
But now because I placed the agent here in the next income phase, that will score or make income for all three of those. So we'll do that now. So I'm gonna need one more agent for sure. But I still get to move one size C somewhere. And I will do that too. Uh, it doesn't matter, but yeah. I'll place it in one of my level two areas. And then I will re-roll this die for free with this action, which is still a one that didn't help, but that's fine. I'll put this here, which means I don't pay anything because it's a four-sided die, it counts. So I'm going to take a remittance card. And let me just double check I didn't miss one. Yeah, five is correct, good. And I'm going to put this, yeah, I might as well. I'll put it at level three. I need to put a size C into red and take from yellow. So I will put one in the headquarters to make sure my loan is covered. And I will take from, uh, this one's yellow, right? Yeah, I'll take from here. Which means that is, no, you know what? It's gonna be a while. I'm gonna put that here because in level three, I get an extra two coins. So I get two coins plus two coins plus one coin. And from now on, I'll get another coin, but that's fine. I get five for now. And that's that. Then I'm going to use this one again. No, I could do that, but I don't know that I want to. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna be silly. I'm gonna put this one here, which means I have to pay one coin, that's fine. And I get one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna use that to place a loan, but I'm only gonna give the loan for one round because that'll come back and then I can give it back to the bank anyway. So that's a quick way to make a couple extra dollars. So I'm gonna do that. Yeah. All right, so that's the end of the round. I get income. So here now, because I'm at level four, these are worth three each. So three and three is six. So I get six coins from that. One, two, three, four, five. That's five. Eh, we'll change them in later. Then I've got one, two, three, four, five times three is 15. Five, 10, 15. And here, now because I have this agent here that I'd forgotten about before, three times four is 12. So that's 10 and two. This one gets me one coin for every red, which is one, two, three, four, five. And this one is still scoring me 11 for my three level two agencies or branches. So I get 11 from that. Now, I have to pay two coins for interest on my loan. This comes back here, he comes off and these go back here, so I don't have to worry about any emergency funding. And this slides down one. I did not complete this goal, but that's fine, it will be discarded. And we move into the final round of the game, removing the dice. And I need to 100% make sure this turn that I build that branch. And I need to get one more agent, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need one more agent and one more level three branch for sure. So let's see how that gets done. All right, we turn over our last event card, which says if I take two remittances, I will get to fame. I don't care about that at all for this turn. I need to focus on getting that branch and getting that agent. So let's go ahead and seed the board. I got a six and a four. Go here. I've got two sixes, we'll say yellow green. Goes here. I've got one six, goes here. Another six die goes here. I got a four-sided die here and another four-sided die 
that goes right here. Whoops. And then I roll my dice. So I need to do everything I can to make sure I get an agent and a level three thing. So there's a two, there's a three, and there's a six. All right. Before we do anything, let's take a look at money. That's six coins. I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I got 70 coins right now. So with what I see on the board, I could, mm, potentially I could, Move over some more size C's. Well, I can at least make a donation for this round. All right, so I'm going to buy. Hold on, I need 24. One, two, three, four for my level three branch. I don't want to kill that. So I will get one, two, three. for my level three branch. Do I need any more money? Um, hmm. This six could get me a lot of coins and make a donation. Yeah, I don't, that's fine. All right, so I'm gonna use the last 20 to take two more. I will begin by placing the six here, which gets me five coins and allows me to give a loan for one round. So I will push that up to level one. And then I will place my three here, which gets me one coin and one agent, which I will place. This is gonna score for green. So I wanna make sure there's a green. So I'll put that there. And then finally, this two goes here it counts as a three for difference, so I don't pay anything. And I build one more level three branch. So I can get three points if I have four size C on this tile, which is not going to happen at the end of this game. So I don't care about that. Oops, that's upside down. That's one point for every five fame, which I am at four, that doesn't help me. This is one point for every yellow space, which at the moment I have one two, three, three yellow spaces. And this is also, uh, I had two of those, three points for four sizes. So I'm going to take that point per yellow space and we'll put those back. It doesn't really matter at this point because that's the end of the game. And I will build this one here and activate that. I need to pay my 24 coins and I need to move the three size C over to here. And that is the end of the game. So we have to finish this round. We move into income. I get three coins for each of these. So that's six coins for those and those come back down. I get one, two, three, four, five times three is 15 again from there. And this one can only score or gain income from two, so I see. So one, two, three, four, five times four is 20. Five, 10, 15, 20. And then I get one coin for every red, which is one, two, three, four, five coins. And again, this, so I get 11 coins. Um, and I'm going to trade those in so it's easy for me to see. One, two, three, four, five, exactly. All right, so that's 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, 65. 
And finally, at the end of the game, everything that else needs to be resolved gets resolved. So this is gone, I didn't do it, and this goes away. So I have to lose one size C from there. And we go into the end game results. So looking at my goal card again, I do have eight agents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. I do have two level three branches. Good. So now we have to count points. So we start by adding points like every 10 coins is one point. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 gets me six points. Every size C that's not this central bank size C gets me one point. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 points there. Every level two branch gets me one point. So I got one, two, three points there. Every level three gets me two points, two, four. And then every two agents gets me one point. So I've got eight agents, that's four points. And then we get these bonus points that I've triggered. One point for every yellow. So I've got one, two, just two yellow. So that's two points. And I get one point for every green, which is one, two, three. And I finished the game with 34 points. So eight agents, two level three, and 34 points. I've successfully beaten the game. So meet me back up top and I'll talk a little bit about what I think about the game. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. Now before I get into my thoughts on the game and how I feel about the game, I want to tell a little bit of a story about how I came across this game and why I'm doing this video. When I was originally given the opportunity to do a preview for this game, I immediately jumped at the opportunity for two reasons. Number one, I'm a really big fan of dice placement games. I love worker placement, but even more, the, the, the added level of dice placement and the numbers of the dice meaning something and that extra little bit of randomness that also means something to the, the play of the game, I enjoy that quite a bit. So I was excited to see a new dice placement game. But on top of that, having spent a few years in Japan living and also teaching and also having discovered a lot of really fun Japanese games, I've always been trying to find a way to do what I can to introduce more international games into the American board gaming hobby. So when I saw the opportunity to help a Chinese publisher bring their game to the US, I jumped at the opportunity. Now, both of those things being said, after I jumped at the opportunity and agreed to do a preview for this game, I then took a closer look at the theme and I saw banking and I saw economic game and I saw historical game. And yes, I'm a teacher, but I'm a science teacher. I don't tend to like history. I don't tend to like business and economics. I'm not a fan of super dry euros that are very, you know, based on history or based on trading or based on economy. And after I saw that, I sort of started to regret my decision. And did I really want to review this game? Did I really want to spend the time learning this game? Was I really going to enjoy this game? And then I got the game and I read the rules and it made sense, but I was still unsure about sort of how the game played. Now, with all that said, I sat down, I played the game and everything just clicked. Now I care about banking. Now I care about this game. This game is really, 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 really good. Yes, I'm going to come right out and tell you, I love this game. Yes, the dice placement is what pulls me in. Yes, the rules were a little bit confusing at first. I understood everything in them. They're not horribly written. It was just that each of the actions did something, but I couldn't really figure out what I was supposed to be doing or how I was supposed to be playing this game. But as soon as I played this game and I played through one, two, maybe three rounds and everything clicked and everything fit together. And if I did this, it did this, which impacted something else. And all of these things started running through my head and I loved it. And I've played and I've played and I've played and I keep playing this game and I really enjoy this game. So now that I've gushed about this game, let's slow down and talk about what it is that I enjoy about this game. There's quite a bit here and there's quite a bit to talk about. It is a little bit heavy, but again, it's not daunting because everything makes sense and everything works together and there are only six actions you can take in this game. So step one is a dice placement game. I really like dice placement games. I like the decision space of having a set number of workers or a set number of actions basically that I can do each round, a set number of locations that represent different kinds of actions that I can take each round, 
the ability to be blocked from doing certain actions. So I have to make decisions about what my best decision is for that round. I enjoy all of these things. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm more of a tactical gamer than I am a strategic gamer. I don't like long plans. I much prefer dealing with the current situation as it's presented to me now and figuring out what is the best thing I can do with what I have at this moment. And that's what worker placement games do for me because again, I'm being blocked on certain spaces. So even if I wanted to do something, I may not be able to get the opportunity to do that thing in a given round because I'm being blocked from that. Or in this case with a dice placement game, if I don't roll the numbers that I need to roll to do certain things that I wanna do, I can't do them. So that adds another level. So there's this random of the dice, there's this random of the being blocked from places. And I enjoy that overall, but that's true about dice placement games. That's not specific about this game. So let's talk more about the dice placement in this game. In this game, there's a couple things. The blocking. The blocking does happen if you have a number that's exactly the same as something that's already in place, you're blocked. But the chances of that happening a lot are pretty low. What's more likely going to happen is the difference in numbers. And that's where this thing, this game also shows me something that's really, really exciting and really interesting to me, right? If I place a die that's lower a number than something that's already on the board, I have to pay to do that. But by placing a low number, I'm activating something much, much more powerful or, or much more helpful for increasing whatever it is that I'm trying to increase in order to better my end game score, or in order to increase my fame track or increase my remittance track or to hold off that loan or to hold off that remittance for a couple more rounds so I can do something else in the meantime. So those low numbers are super important, but you have to balance out how much am I willing to pay to get those stronger actions. And then at the same time, if I place a number that's higher, I'm getting money from that. So if I do that, if I know this number is not very helpful, but if I place this here, it's higher than that number, I'm getting some money, which makes it stronger anyway, and I might not have enough money to do what I need to do unless I get some of that easy money in the middle of a round. Yes, I'm getting money in the income turn, but if I can get money while I'm doing my actions, that makes things a whole lot easier. So when I start the beginning of the round and I have to buy my silver CICs, I might not have enough money to do that. But then if I take the remittance action to get a silver CIC, but I take that remittance action with a high number, so now I get the CIC and some coins, well now maybe I can afford to place a branch on the board. And that is really, really, really cool. And I like that a lot. And honestly, the game, the solo game might even shine more in this regard because we are placing the dice in, in both the multiplayer game and the solo game from high valued number to low valued number. That means the chances of me being able to place a higher number die on a place with a lower number day already there in the multiplayer game is fairly low because we're gonna have already placed a high number dice before we place the low number die. And that's interesting already because we have to start planning, this is going to be blocked later. So maybe I should take that with the higher number die before it gets blocked later. And there's always the ability to spend the coins to re-roll the die. So it might be that you have a one or a two and you don't have enough money. So you re-roll it, hoping that you get a high number to make that money. That could happen. And I think that's probably a, an interesting decision path in the multiplayer game. I haven't played the game multiplayer. I've only played it solo and I love it solo. But what's cool about the solo game is that all of the dice that the AI places out get seated at the beginning of the round. So I instantly see everything that's on the board and now I have decisions to make. Do I wanna place something high to get money, but maybe not a great action? Or do I rather re-roll that hoping to get something low, spend a couple coins, but then get something much, much more powerful as far as the action is concerned? So that juggle or that, that balance in my head, I really enjoy that. Going beyond that, the banking. Again, I said I'm not a huge fan of economic themes. I'm not a huge fan of history, but it was really cool to sort of learn about the world of banking in China. But more than that, just the thinking about banking, like this idea of remittance that it was dangerous to travel, to physically transport money from place to place. So they would deposit in one bank and then pick up their money at another bank when they reached their destination. And that story and that theme comes through in this game, but also the ideas of, of how this works as far as manipulating money stores in your bank to build interest, to build profits, 
and that even if I don't have the money now, I can take a remittance so that I have that size C to do something with, or I can take a loan so that I have that size C to do something with. As long as I make that, that due date or that deadline two, three rounds or two, three months in the future, I can play with that extra, that extra fund or that extra money to do something, to generate money, to generate income, to generate interest on a loan. So you even saw me in the game one round I took a loan to instantly give another loan because the interest I was getting on the loan I was giving was more than the interest I was paying on the loan I received. And these kinds of ideas about borrowing money to loan to get income is not something I would have ever thought about in a real world situation. But when I start thinking about how banking systems work and that banks exist by taking our money, holding them in reserve for when we want them, but while they're in reserve, investing them to make more money. And it's just a really cool concept. And it really shines through in the actions in this game, which means that the actions in this game really fit the theme and really, really make you feel like you're doing what it is that you're doing in the game. And I, I like that a lot. So let's focus more on the solo specifically. I'm not a fan of, of beat your own solo games or beat your own high score solo games generally. I don't mind if there's a goal that you're aiming for and, and that's fine. This game has an AI, which already makes it a solo game that's interesting to me. Now the AI is just blocking spaces, but that's often what AIs do in worker placement style games. So that's not a problem to me. However, this game takes things up two full notches above that, that really, really makes me excited about this game. And that's two things. Again, the first thing is the event deck. The second thing is the story deck. We'll start with the story deck because that's the big one. Every game I'm drawing a card that gives me my end game goals based on whatever the story is that I'm playing through. Now the story cards that I got are Chinese story cards so I couldn't read the title at the top but I'm hoping that if I read the title at the top it would give me a little bit even more theme that sort of drives why I'm working towards the goal that I'm working to and I think that's, that's cool. They're called story cards so I, I really hope that story comes through and I'm expecting that it will when everything's in English. Um, but this idea that one game, I'm hoping to get my fame really high. One game, I'm hoping to expand and build lots of branches. One game, I'm looking to focus on remittance and just do lots of remittance actions over and over again. Every game I play gives me a unique goal and the different goal is driving the way I play the game because that's something else that this game has. There are so many different ways to earn money and so many different ways to earn points in this game that you can't just focus on one thing every time you play the game and do well because situations are changing, especially in the solo game, that end game goal is changing. You've got to change the style and the way that you play. And having those goals different every game is pushing me to try things that I probably wouldn't normally try. And that's also teaching me those things about the banking that I've already talked about. A lot of what I learned was because those goals were pushing me to try things I probably wouldn't have tried otherwise. So I really, really, really love having those goals at the end because not only does it bring variability to the game, it, it pushes me to try the game systems in different ways and I like that a lot. So then you've also got these event cards, right? And these event cards are sort of mini versions of the story card. Yes, they're dictating how the board gets seated with the AI dice and which spaces are sort of blocked off by the AI. That's, that's unimportant, that's mechanics. But the bottom of them, again, gives me a goal for the round. And this is another interesting twist because the goal for the round is often very difficult to achieve. And sometimes I just say, hey, I can't do that. I'm not gonna worry about that at all. But sometimes it's just slightly out of reach and it might be completely different than what I was planning originally to do that round. But I see that if I can do that, it's going to help me towards that end game goal. So I might have to do something that's not going to, to satisfy one of those end game conditions, but the reward for that event card might be something that is going to satisfy those end game conditions. And by doing the thing I need to do to get that reward, it's going to help me in some other way. It's going to give me a government favor that gives me some unique ability. It's going to make me build another branch so I can have more, more money through income at the end of the round. Or it might just be giving me an extra turn. And if it's giving me an extra turn and I can do that first action, why not? because then I've done something I wasn't planning on doing, but I get an extra turn so I can do what I was planning on doing anyway. So these event cards are really cool because they sort of tease you a little bit. This is going to be hard to do. You're going to get something really good for it, but it might ruin what you wanted to do originally. And if you focus too much on this and fail, then it's going to ruin you completely. And I, 
I like that. Sometimes I just say, no, thank you. But sometimes I say, I'm going to challenge that because if I can do it, that's great. And if I can't, ouch, but we'll figure that out afterwards. And I like that a lot. So I can't say enough good things about this game. The dice placement in the game is great. The thematic actions in the game are great. The story cards and event cards really help drive this solo game and solo experience. And honestly, the multiplayer game, I don't have these in-game goals. I don't have the seated board from the AI before I get started. I'm sure the, the multiplayer is fun because different things are going to come up because you're playing against smart opponents and you're going to have to adjust to match those smart opponents. But I, I really love what the solo mode presents here and I think this is a great solo dice placement game. So if you like dice placement, if you like solo games, definitely, 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 definitely check this one out. There's also an expansion for this that adds pawn shops and some things that they call quests. And the quests are basically if you have a certain number of remittances or if you have a certain number of government favor tiles or if you have a certain number of something, you can take an action to satisfy a quest which scores you more points. The pawn shops let you score points based on these pawn shop tiles that you have that you can also use later to sort of get better versions of some of the actions that you take in the game. I haven't had a chance to sit down and really play through it yet. I really hope to do so in the future because I can only imagine it does great things. But definitely take a look at the expansion as well if that's something that interests you. This game is coming to Kickstarter on January 12th. I will put a link down below as soon as the Kickstarter campaign is live. And again, I definitely recommend you check this out. Whether multiplayer or solo, if you like dice placement, especially if you like economic themes, definitely check this out. I would love to see more international publishers publishing great games in the US. So please check it out. And if you like this content, please remember to like and subscribe below and I'll see you next time. Thanks.